Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm excited to talk to everyone about hybrid and live sales play by play today. I hope that um, each of you are looking forward to what this hour has to offer. Um, my goal is to make sure that all that we talk about is utilized for training later. So even if uh, you want to pass this along to anyone helping you out, it could prove to be very, very helpful. Um, I wanted to welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, it is titled Live Sales Play-by-Play. -play. Uh, also, uh, another term might be a hybrid sale because you're utilizing ShowWorks auction. Uh, the hope is that you'll find this as helpful training um, if you have already decided to hold a hybrid auction or if you're still trying to decide if a live auction utilizing ShowWorks auction is the right fit for your fair. Uh, this is the third webinar of a four-part webinar series. The very first one was on how to do and implement add-on only um, an add-on only site for your fair. Uh, quite a few people, most a, a lot of our fairs are uh, utilizing the site for add-ons only. That webinar is completely full of exactly how to implement. Uh, add-ons online as simply as possible. Last week, I talked about um, data elements and how it moves across from ShowWorks 2020 into ShowWorks Auction and vice versa. Uh, that is a very, very um, uh, valuable webinar as well. So I urge you, if you didn't already get a copy of that, um, you can request it and let us know that you want a copy of that. Um, I'm offering you this QR code for you to be able to jump into our demo site. It is the same demo site that we have uh, utilized in the past. And um, here you can go ahead and register and log in as a buyer. Um, we're gonna be using the competitive auction today that I'll be focused on. And you can feel free to click around and place bids. Um, register as a buyer and uh, I'll have this QR code pop up throughout in case you want to grab it as well. Um, Kylie is and Kimberly are helping me in the chat. Kylie just posted the uh, link that that QR code goes to fairsoftware.com backslash auction. Uh, that's, that's where it'll take you. Feel free to make this as interactive as you'd like. All right. Um, I'm going to start at a little bit of a higher level and just talk about utilizing ShowWorks auction. Um, you have the ability to implement auctions with bidding in a couple of different ways. In 2020, we developed a very focused uh, product allowing for virtual auctions integrated with ShowWorks allowing buyers online to bid against each other. Uh, the lots can close automatically, incrementally. Extensions are put into play for prices to be driven up. Loadout reports are available immediately and the winners flow into ShowWorks. Uh, while this use case remains valid for some sales out there, uh, we continue to push forward and allow for the integration of buyers to be online and in person uh, before and or during a live auction. Additionally, allowing for a live auctioneer to drive the closing of those lots, which is the key to a live auction. Um, today, I'm gonna focus on how to successfully maximize your fundraising and streamline your labor when using ShowWorks Auction to clerk your live sale. So strictly on that live auction part. You'll notice I have the word complex over it. Um, just feedback. If you're implementing a completely virtual auction, it, you can do it with one man, very easy. Uh, the complexity of hosting a live sale, uh, utilizing show at all, but, um, and then including ShowWorks auction on top of it, uh, it is a lot of process definition. So you're going to see that. I'm going to talk about that um, and understanding how the process interacts with the data flowing back and forth. So um, with, with that as a lead in, I'm just going to keep on rolling. Um, 
This is our auction site. I will be jumping into the live site a little bit later. I'm going to do more focus on the admin side, but I wanted to throw this up for, uh, for simplicity and quickness in this presentation. Um, by now, you should have all seen the auction site. If you go ahead and register using your mobile number, uh, just like any buyer, you'll get a uh, link to access the website as well as your four-digit security code. Um, I'm going to make the quick assumption that y'all know how to navigate into the uh, first auction that appears there, the competitive auction. And then you can click on a lot and enter a bid. Uh, when you're entering a bid, you can designate a split bid between more than one buyer. Um, that's just an indicator for the administrators if the buyer does want to split that bid. Um, then also you have the ability now as an auction to designate whether you'd like flooring to be an option. Um, if one, I would like to floor this lot. Some of y'all use the word resale in your communities uh, to mean flooring, but flooring, <clears throat> it takes the same exact uh, definition as Showworks does. And so flooring would be applied um, when that lot flows over to Showworks. Uh, the destination must be selected. The bid gets entered, and then this is where incorporating the online buyers into the sale come in handy is they have the ability to put that max bid or that max proxy bid in. Um, there are quite a few fairs that see that utilized uh, to really drive up their prices. So that option is there. That's what people are seeing, and they're going to hit bid um, in order to get their bid placed. I'm going to back up a little bit, not really back up, but uh, move from that and just talk about the characteristics of a live auction. Um, the closing of the lots are driven by a live auctioneer. So that means that you have an auctioneer in play. He's going to deem a lot sold and recognize those winners. Um, bids in when utilizing Showworks auction, they can be accepted online and live. You have the choice to turn on or off online bidding. Um, it has become a standard practice that online bidding is getting to be routinely turned off during the live sale. Uh, Pre-bidding is occurring, max bidding is occurring, add-ons are accepted, and dependent on the internet connectivity, of your location with your uh, with your auctioneer and the ability for your internet to keep up. Um, we've had quite a few people enabling online bidding prior to the sale starting and then turning it off. But we now have that option for you if that's something you'd like to engage in. Um, the auction administrators use the spotter tool on the auction block to close lots in real time. Uh, the spotter tool is also used to set dispositions and splits uh, at your convenience or immediately. Multiple people can be logged into the spotter tool at the same time. Uh, we now have auction cast. Uh, some of you might have used it last year. Uh, it's digital signage. It recognizes lots and buyers and sponsors in your live ring. Um, Live streaming through Zoom is a key element that allowing buyers at home to keep up with the live calling of the auction. Um, and add-ons, they can remain open after the close of your auction, and they can also be open before your auction if that's something that you choose to do. There's quite a few that uh, actually like to do that. Um, we've seen consistently 10 to 20% more earned when Showworks auction is enabled. Um, exhibitors are self-promoting by sharing their URL. Um, the buyers register themselves and directly sync with Showworks client for the complete buyer list. Um, if y'all actually do register, I will show you uh, how quickly it happened. Um, I have y'all synced up to Showworks and I'll show y'all where y'all registered. Um, there 
the fact that you have cloud clerking by more than one administrator available without a Showworks license, um, a lot of people like that if they have good internet in their uh, sale barn. Transactions and payments uh, directly sync with Showworks client uh, for the final reporting and billing. Um, auction cast, digital signage, already mentioned that, and then uh, the online recognition um, of winners and amounts and highlighting sponsors online, uh, that remains in place on the online site even after your sale. Uh, it is optional um, to put sponsors on your online site. It's optional uh, for you to recognize contributors uh, and your add-on totals um, on the online site. And uh, by putting all of this in place, your exhibitors are getting um, seeing more money. So I'm going to go into the prerequisites. Um, your computer must be running at least Microsoft Office 2013, uh, Showworks 2020 version 20.4.0, which is the version that was introduced in January of 2021 is the version that you need. It will be really obvious if you don't have that version because the provision auction but button did not exist before that. So if you're missing that button, then you need to upgrade your Showworks. Um, you do have to have all of your entries loaded and entered through online entries. Um, Showworks Plus, a Fair Vault package, if you have not opened your online entries for this year yet, you're gonna see the two different options of Showworks Basic or Showworks Plus. All that means is with Showworks Plus, you're getting Fair Vault with that. Fair Vault is what holds the images and videos and does so much more for the shows. But um, you can see that at uh, fairsoftware.com. Um, there is a section on pricing that you can look at that um, and see. Um, the final prerequisite for a live auction hosted through Showworks Auction is a solid internet connection. Um, you will want to test your internet connection ahead of time before your sale. Uh, if you're working off Wi-Fi, you're going to want to work with your network um, people to make sure that you have a designated um line that's not being that others can't join uh, but you're looking for a solid internet connection uh, if it's something that i usually look at zoom's uh, latest uh, network configuration requirements and that is a great um great basis for what you might need so uh take a look at that test that ahead of time because if you don't have the solid internet connection then uh, utilizing a cloud-based system just isn't going to work Okay, I have a spider web of methods of things to get over to you. Um, and I tried to make it as simple as possible and as pictorial as possible as possible. Um, what I'm going to start with is this picture and I'm going to come back to it. Uh, in order to implement a live auction, which means you've got buyers that are online and in person, you have some options of what to implement. However, across the middle of the slide, you're going to say these are all options, but they're recommended as critical for live auction success. Um, you have online buyer registration, images and videos, live stream, um, Zoom, uh, auction cast sponsor, and then other options that are things that you could do in addition to those items is to enable sponsors or immediate buyer payments. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the recommended auction steps. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the auction, the quick steps to set up. Uh, but really, I want to explain um, how people are kind of managing their auctions when they go live. Um, at first, they're going through the effort to provision from the auction site. I'm going to go over that. They're registering their buyers uh, early. They're allowing for buyers to register 
um, themselves by putting QR codes up and around the show in the sale and in the buyer registration areas. Uh, they'll also open it anywhere from a week to a month to two months ahead of time just to get an idea of who might be interested in register and participating and buying. Um, there is a new item called Auction Monitor. It's a new application uh, generated by Showworks Auction, but it is um, actually has a name called Showworks Agent. Uh, but it's, we're calling, we're going to refer to it as auction monitor through all of this, but, uh, you do need to install that and start auction monitor on your computer. Um, any change to the lot info or sale, uh, order or buyers, you can just provision that data over again from the show works. Um, open your sale for pre-bidding and max proxy bidding and open for add-ons early if you're able to, or as soon as you have that sale order set. Um, a lot of people, I mentioned this earlier, are turning off the online bidding in time for the live auction. And what they're doing is going through and they're confirming the max bids that have been placed and making sure that the online spotter, there's a spotter that understands who has placed max bids to ensure that those bids are recognized. Um, as the sale goes on, uh, once it starts taking place, you're going to confirm your winning buyers and your split bids are recorded correctly in the auction site. You're going to update destinations and flooring designations in the auction site. You're going to clerk those winning bids over to Showworks. Um, you can request immediate buyer payments and leave open for add-ons um, a number of days or weeks later. Um, Getting into the nitty gritty, uh, these are the quick steps of how to set up. You're gonna update your email address, update entry data, create the sale, review your invoice numbers, review your buyers, provision to the auction site, configure Showworks auction, um, and set up and run auction monitor. I'm gonna walk through those steps right now because that is a lot with no pictures or demo. Um, this is new from last year uh, now. The very first thing you should do when you open your Showworks file is go in and update your email address under main menu, the setup tab online, the reply email address is what you need to update. This is this email is where all communications from our support team are going to come from. Um, we have had been able to automate quite a bit upon the time that you provision and throughout your sale. And um, so that is the email address that all of those communications are going to come from. You should go into that email and add support at showworkscloud.com into your contacts. And I'll ask Kylie to add that just into the chat, but it's support at showworkscloud.com. Add that to your contacts so that way nothing ends up in spam or um, where you don't make sure you get all of the emails. Um, I'm making the assumption that you know what you're doing all the way through the process in order to create the sale. Uh, there's a lot of data that can be updated before you create the sale. And last week's webinar went into a lot of detail around that. Um, but you're going to create the sale within Showworks. And then you're going to review your invoice numbers and review your buyers. Um, the way that I suggest that you do that is a multi looking at a couple of things. Um, first, you're going to jump into your sale, and this is after you've already created sale. Uh, that sale is created based on the sale order you have set. And you're going to look and you're going to say, um, you know what? The invoice number is the number that is going to appear on the auction site. It is the lot number. And I'm just going through and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're, they match my sale order beautifully. That's what I intended. A lot of you do intend that. And then um, here's where I get off. Um, I actually have a sale order of 20, 21, 22, uh, 23, 24, 25, 26. Um, and I need to make that decision right now and think, was this intended to be number 20 or not? 
Uh, if it did need to be changed, um, this is where I could go in and actually just edit. Uh, you might not even have to hit, yeah, edit multiple records. And then you can just override the sales invoice number. Um, even if you ended up with something on the online site and you needed to change an invoice number, that's where you do it, but just modify it to what you want it to be, save it. And, um, it's getting saved as you go. And then you'll go ahead and provision to auction uh, in the same light. Uh, you're going to review your buyers. You have the choice of whether to bring your buyers, um, down or not. Uh, it looks like we have some people that have joined us, um, in here. I didn't have this many people, uh, registered before, but, um, it looks like Lake County Fair and Bastrop Livestock, uh, maybe Landon Green is here. So if y'all registered online, it already showed up in my file. Um, if I already had this open, I would have clicked refresh and then y'all would have appeared. Um, but you wanna make sure that this uh, your buyer list looks the way you want it to before you go over. The next, Uh, is to actually provision the auction. Um, what has changed from last year? Uh, the button is the same. You're going to enter your online entry uh, credentials in order to get push your data to the auction site. Um, but what what is happening here is you're going to receive emails from support at showworkscloud.com. It's going to grant you access to your admin site, and then upon this is what you get. Uh, it's going to be the email you received upon your first provision, giving you access and letting you know, go reset your password. Um, then you're going to get a provision. Every time you provision, it's going to notify you and say, Showworks Auction has begun your provision. You should get another email. That other email is going to be the status of what's going on with your uh, site. Don't get scared. I used a lot of test data to generate something that looked as scary as I could make it, but really it's not. This is that next email you're going to get. Every time you provision, you're gonna look for this and it's gonna tell you Showworks auction provision on, and it's gonna have the date timestamp and whether or not it was successful. Uh, the very first top part of that email is going to be any warnings and errors. I go into these warnings and errors in the uh, webinar I did last week. And um, so I'm not gonna go into them now, but I will say heed the warnings and read them. Um, there's going to be a warning and then it's gonna say to fix um, what to do next. So make sure you read that and take the steps to fix it because if you do, everything's gonna go smoothly. If you have any questions about why you might've received it or um, how to truly fix in your special situation, uh, reach out to us, that's reply to us and uh, let us know how we can help. Um, the bottom part of that email is, uh, talks about what areas to inspect next. Um, it gives you, it also gives you the URL for your auction site. It gives you, reminds you that you have access to the admin site. Um, it has the, uh, lets you know that if the chat is available, chat with us, say hello. Um, if you let us know that uh, you're there, then uh, it just, I don't know. We like to talk to y'all. So feel free to reach out. We can do a lot over chat. We can do screen shares, um, that sort of thing. So that is a, one of our favorite ways to interact with you. Uh, but then it also has key areas to inspect. And that's what I'm going to go over a little bit today. I'm also going to talk in detail about all of the setup and tools and reports next week in detail. Um, just I, there's so much to cover and I just want to make sure that I allot enough time to talk specifically about the live uh, sales today. Um, let's see, uh, after you've provisioned, you've gotten that email, you've made a few tweaks, you might've provisioned again. Um, that's when you're going to go in and actually configure your auction admin. Uh, when you get that email, it's going to tell you to go to admin.showworks.cloud. Uh, you will have access to your fair. Um, and I tell people just to kind of start at the top and work your way down. Um, 
in the fair setup area. Uh, there's under the options, you have fair options. This is controls your fair name, your registration notes, your terms and conditions. And then you have the very specifics around each auction. Today, we're talking about the competitive auction. So I'm going to keep my focus there. Uh, this is where you activate. This is where you allow online bidding or not. Uh, you set some of your time frames of when things are going to be happening. You set up your Zooms. Um, and you can designate whether winners should receive notifications or not. Um, I'll go ahead and enable that for today. Uh, that way, if anyone wins, y'all can get a notification. Um, and then the other major area uh, specific after you've initially provisioned is to go into the auction setup and look at the auction entries. Uh, there are two key elements that need to be updated here. Um, the bid increment in dollars is not set in Showworks. It is set here uh, in the auction site. You can go find, uh, let's say, all of our barrows, oh, I have one, um, and set the bid increment for it to be whatever you'd like for it to be. Um, I'll set for 25, even though I think it should go for higher. Um, and filter and set those bid increments. Or uh, the other thing is you will probably need to set the schedule um, for those lots to close. Um, the lots appear on the auction site and in the spotter tool based on that end time of when a lot is supposed to close before it looks at the invoice number. So if things are a little out of whack, uh, that's usually what it is, is the bid end time might not uh, be the same for all of your lots. Uh, and that may be intentional and it may not be, uh, depends on your sale. Um, the way that I inspect quite a bit is I will uh, come through and I will go up, I'll, I'll sort up and down and I'll look and you can tell here I had a bunch that were by the pound. I'm just going to look. These are my steers. I actually did intend them to be by the pound. So that's that's good. And then everything else was by the head. Um, I can sort up and down on my bid increments in dollars, uh, 50 cents. It might look like an outlier, except for the fact that I've got some that are by the head. Uh, and then looking the other way and just seeing some patterns of where things change, I can usually spot quite a bit right or wrong with my lots just by sorting in there, but definitely worth inspecting. Um, the other thing that would need to be set up in here is immediate buyer payments if you're going in to set up those payments. Um, and I'll show you all a little bit more detail about that later. All right. Uh, the new part, and y'all already saw the benefits of it, uh, is auction monitor, Showworks agent auction monitor. Um, it refreshes data in Showworks client to see the buyers, the add-ons, and payments immediately. And then it also pulls over the winning transactions um, on a uh, on a on-demand basis. So when you choose to pull that data over, that's when it comes over. It is really slick. Um, it is where we put most of our investment in during this off season, getting ready for this season. And um, our team works with you to make sure you understand exactly how to set it up. Uh, right now it runs um, kind of like a little system tray or it will be a system tray uh, that sits down <clears throat> on your computer. And uh, I, it's supposed to get a new look and feel, but right now it's a little black box that runs constantly and pulls people uh, over. So. The cool part is, um, is that you'll be able to see any add-ons or any payments made immediately come over here. And then uh, real time as you're updating things in the auction site with the auction monitor on, you can push those things directly over into Showworks. Uh, the intention behind that is so that 
when an individual show, walks up to the table, you can check out the same way you did before. If that's uh, something that you choose to do, you can find that individual and go look at their buyer activity. Um, Kathy Martinez has no activity, uh, but you can look at their activity and get them um, get them checked out. Uh, there are certain things that appear in ShowWorks only still, and a lot of that is based on flooring calculations. If a lot is floored, then that flooring calcula calculation is done within ShowWorks. So if you have a lot of flooring occurring or any flooring, you may choose to teach your um, cashiers to utilize ShowWorks itself uh, to pull up the buyer activity when that buyer is ready to check out. Um, another, the other item that would make it to where you wanted to utilize um, show works for checkout is in the case that you have any destination specific adjustments that need to be made or paid by the buyer or any percentage based adjustments uh, that might need to be paid by the buyer. Um, if you have flat fee adjustments, those can be placed on the invoices and sent over to the auction site for immediate buyer payments. But um, in trying to keep it simple, if you have a lot of adjustments and you have uh, flooring, then you'll probably want to do your cashiering out of ShowWorks itself, but the data will be there um, based on how, uh, how your clerks keep everything updated. <clears throat> I'm gonna shift a little bit in my um, direct, in the direction, uh, mainly to take some time to talk about the critical roles in your auction. Another area that we tried to invest a lot of time and effort into in this off season is in defining the jobs that already existed in your live auctions, but define them as they, uh, as you implement ShowWorks auction, the online platform. Um, Kylie dropped down and added the critical live uh, hybrid auction roles link into the chat. And um, I'm gonna pull it up just so you can see specifically how it's used and why we use it. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about each of these roles. Uh, if you go to that link, it's going to take you to the critical live hybrid auction roles. Um, down the right, you should be able to see more of like a table of contents or all the roles that are included in here, uh, including the auction director, which I assume all of you are. Uh, if I were to click on the job aid specific to the auction director, then they're going to have a section of training uh, that needs that is recommended. Uh, review the job aids uh, for all of your people is one of them. Um, and then what to do on the morning of the sale, during the sale, after the sale, as it pertains to that role. Uh, if you're managing this, then you know one of the things you want to make sure you do is you review your online site. Confirm the lots appear in the order that matches your intention. Confirm your photos appear where you expect to see photos. Um, do a test on your buyer registration. Is it set up and is it working? Um, do my buyers have the technology needed in the buyer registration area if needed? Uh, are they going to use their own devices? Um, confirm that buyer payments are working if you are utilizing immediate buyer payments. Uh, today, uh, we have PayPal available. Um, we are on the fast track to have other options available to y'all. Um, and you will get an email notification when we have those other options. We're hopeful that we'll roll out two additional options at the same time. Um, and we will be shouting it from the rooftops so that y'all have more options for collecting payments. Um, the, you wanna make sure that the block is set up appropriately. Confirm your spotters have all the information and technology to perform their duty. 
Um, making sure that anyone who is touching the system is properly trained and understands what they're doing, what their role is. Uh, you're going to want to make sure auction cast is working, view auction cast on the main streams, um, see it displaying photos and current lots, uh, log into the buyer site online, look at the video feed for Zoom, uh, make sure signage is posted, and um, ultimately you probably control the bid button and you can remove it from the auction site at the time the live sale starts. Um, review and print uh, competitive bids for your um, for your online spotter, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's really thorough and I, I, I believe it's intended to cover uh, quite a few different methods of how a lot of people do things or how we see it best practiced. The idea is that you could go into any of these job aids and you could either just hit print and there you have it, or you could copy and paste it into a Word document and change it, or you could print it and mark it up and say, this is what applies to our fair. Um, and at that time, you could have job aids for every single one of your roles and just hand them to them and say, this is your job. Make sure you follow these instructions. So use these as you see fit. Um, there are fantastic, fantastic um, resource for you. Um, I'm going to go real quickly through uh, and talk about each of these roles. Yes, I am. Um, each of these roles, and I'll flip a little bit back and forth um, with the system, but buyer registration administration. Um, so buyer registration, same as when you showed up to this webinar and I had the QR code and you were able to scan it and register, put your information in, um, make buyer registration as simple as possible. You have the ability to let your buyers register themselves. And then you can have someone, one or two people who are sitting at a buyer registration who can assist buyers with registration. They can update information for those buyers. Um, they can look up the buyer numbers and write down and say your buyer number 15 and hand them a card so they can bid at the auction site, um, at the auction itself. I'm going to jump into the section where uh, a buyer administrator might hang out, um, but they will have access to this buyer window. Um, remember, anything that gets added or updated here with auction monitor on flows directly over into Showworks. It is critical if you are doing a live sale or clerk and clerking your sale in Showworks auction online that the buyers appear in here so that you can update the buyer numbers real time and they'll show up. So utilizing this module is extremely important. Um, but let's say um, we had, you know, Shay showed up and she walks up to the table and I say, oh, hi, Shay. And I just want to confirm your phone number. And uh, she gives me that. And then we go through I'm able to update it, need be. And um, she said, you know, I, I, uh, I might, I, I misplaced my security code for the auction. I'd say, well, check your text, see if it's there. But if not, I have her security code to give to her if she wants to get online and do some add ons or bidding that way. But uh, more importantly, here, her buyer number is 1004. And so that's the number I would hand her and say, your buyer number 1004. Uh, go forth and bid. Now let's say uh, 1004, I did, maybe I pre-printed my cards and she doesn't need to be 1004. I actually need her to be number 200. Um, I can change it right there on site. It's going to give me a little warning. Um, but when I go in to look for Shay again, buyer number 200 is what she is. And I can hand her the 200 card. Uh, the reason I was able to assign her buyer number 200 was she, uh, buyer number 200 was not taken yet. That buyer number was not taken. I have a gap 
intentionally in between my buyers um, for those individuals that were already registered. And then I had put a dummy buyer out there. So everyone that registered online would come in after that. And I could hold a space if I needed to do any maneuvering at my live site. So a little bit of a, um, you may want to bookmark this spot because there is some buyer number manipulation you could do to make things easier for you. Um, and with the proper instructions or however you manage your buyer numbers, everyone does it a little differently. Just know that this is the window that you can do that in. Um, I'm just going to pop over and look into my buyers. Oh, it already updated. I didn't even have to refresh, but buyer ID for Lake County Fair was already changed to 200. So you can see that it came across real time. Um, really exciting uh, to see that. So um, the next uh, role is the auctioneer, of course. Um, they are the heartbeat of the auction. Let them do their thing. Uh, for a live sale, uh, utilizing the auction, um, site, you're going to want someone who is designated to watch the bids online. Um, there are a couple of different ways to do that. And the job aid details that out. One method that I recommend, um, depending on who it is, is they could sit here and watch, um, watch the actual auction site and watch the numbers go back and forth and who the current winning buyer is. Uh, a better way, I think, um, is to go into the admin site and utilize the spotter tool. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the spotter tool and how that's utilized, but um, the spotter tool is utilized by that online spotter. It's also used by the next two roles that I have listed on there. It's clerk number one, who's on the block at the auction. And then there's clerk number two, who I'm deeming them to be off the block at the auction. Typically that second clerk is the individual that the runner, if you have runners, they might bring a sheet of paper and invoice back to that clerk. Um, but this clerk, Number two is the one that updates the lots uh, after the fact. And that first clerk is the one that keeps up with the auctioneer. And that online bidder spotter is the one watching to see what's happening to make sure if there's an online bid that needs to be recognized and they're notifying the auctioneer that the bid has gone up. So um, Let me go ahead and jump into the spotter tool itself. That way I can make sure that we uh, cover that. Um, I'm gonna first show you the spotter tool from the perspective of the clerk that's sitting on the block. Uh, typically what's going to happen is you are going to have um, we're on lot number one, the auctioneer has deemed it. Uh, what you see is the lot itself. You see a buyer number, you see an amount that you'll enter, and then the button for competitive bids. Uh, what can happen if you want to track every bid that is placed, um, and the reason you would want to track every bid that is placed is in the case that you want every buyer or every bid to be um, appearing online. And if you have online bidders that have already placed max bids, you want to be able to engage with the system so that the bids go back and forth. Um, so starting out, uh, we default and put a buyer called floor bidder in there so that this defaults so that the process just goes a lot quicker. Um, we're on lot number one, the floor bidder is up, your auctioneer is about to start. Before we even start, we already have a, a 
starting bid at $200 from Beth Dutton, and this is orange, auto bid, saying that, indicating to me that there was an auto bid placed online. Um, the auctioneer is going to recognize that and say, or your online spotter is going to make sure that the auctioneer recognizes that. Let's say the auctioneer started at 100. Your online spotter is going to say 200 online. Your clerk could also see this and say it 200 online. Your auctioneer is going to say, all right, 200 online. Do I hear 250? And at that point, he hears 250 from the audience. Here's 250. He enters it. Notice what happened. Everything was captured, but there was another auto bid from Beth Dutton at 275. So your online spotter is like 275. Make sure the auctioneer recognizes 275 online. We've got 275 online. Do I hear, let's go 400. 400 on the floor, 400, 400. You can see that this all shows up in blue, indicating that it was a floor bidder. Um, and in the case that someone else were to see that and bid, because 400 just got updated everywhere um, on the online site, on AuctionCast, which I'm about to show, um, then it's just hanging out there and your auctioneer is calling for another bid. Do I hear 500? Do I hear 500? If there was someone online that wants to bid against me at 500, y'all go for it. Uh, Cause I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Um, if you're logged in and want to bid against lot number one, higher than 400. Oh, we have an online bid from Kylie. Thank you, Kylie. Um, this is an indicator it turned green, an online bid of 500. So your online spotter is going to yell out to your auctioneer, 500 online. Oh, fantastic, 500 online. Um, you know, do I hear 600? 600 from the floor, we've got 600. Going once, going twice, sold. At the moment that the auctioneer says sold, that is when your clerk number one ticks the sold button. Your auctioneer is going to say, thank you so much. We want to recognize Triple R Ranch for purchasing that lot. You're going to enter the buyer number. You're going to click replace buyer. And if every auction is a little different, I've seen them say, all right, and where did you want that processed? Uh, oh, you want a resale or oh. LNL processing. All right, we're updating it right now. LNL processing, and your lot is ready to go. Um, let's say that you actually have invoices that you run out to your buyers. Let's say you sent a runner over to Triple R Ranch, and Triple R Ranch actually fills it out, and they say, you know what, we're actually going to split the six hundred. Um, this is when you bring that paper comes back to the second clerk who's logged in the same spotter tool. You can both be logged in at the same time. And that clerk says, oh, I need to mark this as split. Uh, we've got 200, or sorry, we've got 300 going to Triple R Ranch. And then the other is going to Jody White. Um, the remainder is going there and hit save. Or if it was something that um, was actually going to be split by additional buyers, you just hit the plus sign, and you can find um, you can find that next person and hit the remainder, and save it. So all three of those have now been entered uh, as winners there. If for some reason um, this I, this lot is to be floored. Uh, this is where you tick the box to floor it. Um, you can also unfloor from this location. What it is doing is it is going to send the indicator that this lot was floored over to Showworks so that Showworks can calculate the billing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tick floored. Uh, and then at that point, you move on to the next lot. I've already got an online bid from Jody White for $150. Uh, my online spotter 
would make sure the auctioneer sees that $150 online. All right, uh, we've got 200 from the floor. Uh, all I'm hitting is 200 enter. And then going once, going twice, market sold. Uh, fantastic. We want to recognize um, Casey Dutton for making that purchase and uh, supporting Aud Audrey at that point in time. Um, and there you go. It's closed, all of that. If there's any information that comes back, that second, uh, second clerk will hop in and go and update this. Um, in order to pull these winning lots over into Showworks, uh, this is the magic button that has to be pressed. Um, you're gonna make the assumption uh, that you have gone through and you've updated your buyers, you've updated your, um, you've updated your buyers and you've updated your destinations in the online site. And then you're gonna click clerk winning bids. Um, when you click clerk winning bids, it's going to tell you it's going to push some data. If it's pushing a little bit of data, it won't take as long. If you're pushing your wholesale through, it might take um, it might take some time. Uh, but it's running. Oh, I'll show you. It's running. It's doing its thing over here. Uh, Y'all will have a prettier version to look at uh, probably next week. Uh, we're excited about that. But um, I can go in and look at lot number uh, one and oh there's my split right there two hundred dollars came over um for it was triple r ranch jody white and max owens sitting right there if i were to go into triple r ranch and find um find triple r ranch i can see that when i go into billing and i start to pull oh triple r ranch has done a few other things as well but that sale purchase of two hundred dollars is on there. I go to look at my buyer activity. Oh, let me make this bigger. Can I make it bigger? I hope y'all can see that. But you can see um, invoice number one, that market barrow, uh, Cameron Jones, thirty three point three 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 percent for two hundred dollars is sitting there. Uh, it looks like there was also a pork processing fee on that that got applied. Um, I'm going to show you one other thing because I think that pork processing feed uh, might have been placed on that invoice. Um, of course, I just shut down my own show works. I think it might have been placed. Um, and if I go in and look up Triple R Ranch, I can see, oh, yeah. Um, if I were logged in as Triple R Ranch, I can also see this buyer total. It's matching what is what is in Showworks 2020 because I had already pushed and uh, pushed over a fair a, an adjustment on all of my pork. Um, but Mark Barrow, Market Barrows, you can see the two hundred dollars that I owed for lot one. Um, with my adjustment in there and total due, it also shows all of my add-ons that I had placed and it gives me my total amount due. Uh, that total amount um, of 317.67 um, is the amount I would pay unless I want to just do it the easy way and immediate buyer payments are set up and you could have Triple R Ranch go log in to their account and this is going to be their total uh, with any online payment fees that you decide to pass on to them. So uh, that matched up really nicely. Um, so in that case, if you wanted them to pull that up and pay online, they could. Uh, but keep in mind, if there was any flooring or the adjustment might not uh, be there uh, yet, you'll want to run a test to make sure that flows as quick, as nicely as it does as you want it to. Um, the next thing I'm going to pop over to is um, a little bit of the tools. Um, I kind of just raced through the cashier portion, showed y'all those steps in both systems. Um, 
I'm going to jump into auction cast operator and then talk about zoom operator and destination monitor real quickly. I am aware of the time. I am going to run a little bit over. If you do need to leave, we will send a complete recording of this and you can pick up where uh, where you left off. But otherwise, I'm just going to keep plowing through the content. Um, we are on. Uh, Let's see. I'm going to show you auction cast itself. Um, why am I not? Oh, there I am. Okay, auction cast itself. Uh, I'm having it play right now as for the sake of time, something that I pre recorded, but this is the digital signage that you can put up in your, um, put it up in your sale barn. It, I've seen it flanking the auctioneer. I've seen it in concession areas. I've seen it in the second barn or around the fairgrounds. Um, you're taking a URL and you're streaming it or connecting a computer device, to, you know, HDMI cord up to a screen. Um, I'm not sure what your setup might be, but you're connecting this so that it can display. Uh, this is managed and run in one of two places. It's in the spotter tool itself. If your clerk can keep up with that, um, it is a separate advance. Every single time you want to advance, you'd have to show the lot. And then there's also this auction cast uh, that advances the lot. Um, the URL for it sits right there in that auction cast tool. And um, it gets advanced anytime that individual pushes it forward. What you're seeing, um, obviously, uh, in the last video, I had a Zoom feed that was sitting up here. If the, you don't have the Zoom feed active, it could just be your logo. These are all of the images that flowed over from Fair Vault uh, that were loaded either by your exhibitors themselves or they were loaded um, by your Fair team. You have the lot number, the exhibitor's name, any of their um, special placings, weights, their clubs. Uh, you can see the uh, winning bid that is on display. In the top left-hand corner, this is the lot number and the amounts and uh, that it's sold for. So remember lot number one sold for 600 and it was split by three people. It's panning through those three people that contributed to it. Um, and then it shows who's on deck, which lots are on deck. On the bottom left, you can see a sponsorship and some announcements coming through. Uh, those sponsorships are driven by the division. I go into detail on how to set those up um, in last week's webinar, so definitely check that out. Um, some things to consider when you are uh, looking at auction cast is, you know, what screens are you going to use? Uh, will you use Zoom in place of that logo? Yes or no. Um, who is going to be the person to advance the lots during the sale? And just designate a time to test the display. Um, pretty, it is actually pretty simple um, when you're looking at that. The next role on that list of roles is the Zoom operator at the auction. Um, we have a Zoom setup aid. Uh, but really, it's pro it usually it's not the person that is on these calls with us. Usually, there's another person that uh, is going to be working the Zoom itself, and uh, you're going to want to set up a Zoom webinar if you want it embedded into the auction cast. You do actually have to utilize our webinar um, link. And so you'll, we'll usually coordinate if we know you're having a live hybrid sale of getting a link set up for you. And uh, then we want to coordinate with the person that is going to be setting up the Zoom at your site uh, to say, you know, what time are you going to hop on? Can we do a test to make sure that it's going to transfer correctly? and then um, you know, give host over to that person. So uh, we'll want things like, uh, what is their 
name, phone number, uh, their email address so that we can invite them to be a host. Um, but we try to help and make it as simple as possible. The Zoom appears here. It also appears on the buyer site uh, by clicking that video feed. And uh, anyone who's watching on that buyer site, they can pop it out. Uh, usually if I'm on my phone, I can watch and listen to the live sale by toggling back and forth. Um, and it's really helpful because Zoom has the least amount of latency. Uh, you're talking seconds between hearing the auctioneer over the Zoom mark something sold and watching it mark sold on the site. So uh, it gives the best experience to anyone that is not there in person um, in order to be able to do that. Um, I am jumping back to this. Um, we, believe it or not, I did, I, we touched up on online buyer registration. Y'all all experienced it. We talked a little bit about that role. Um, I touched on images and videos. Uh, images and videos make it come to life. If you're going to go through the work, we want it to appear on auction cast, appear on the auction site, make it really, um, really work, you know, for everyone involved. It makes the kids proud to be able to share their link. Um, same as if they were on uh, Instagram, sharing the pictures of their animals, they're able to say, here, go check this out and submit an add-on for me. Um, that's how fairs are getting 20% of their viewers on their sites are from outside their community or out of state. So um, let those kids do more reach for your fair and advertise for your fair, uh, bringing more eyes to the goodness that y'all are doing. It's fantastic. The live stream Zoom, um, we just spoke a little bit about that. I think it's evident as to why you would want it in place, uh, really enhances that, um, that experience. And then auction cast itself, uh, really, it, it, we put auction cast out there as more of a, um, just a care factor. We want all of the hard work of all of the entries you've collected, all of the judging that's taking place, um, all the collection of images and videos and um, things that you've done. We just want to display it in that live setting where you have everybody and, uh, you know, it just brings a little professional look to your sale. Um, and it, it's been well received. Um, some other optional things are those sponsors. Uh, you can see on the actual site, uh, you have division sponsors that appear across the top. Uh, they will pan through on the main page and then um, show up on the specific division for that lot detail. There's also the ability to do lot sponsors and special placing sponsors. They are text only, they appear on the auction site only, but just so you know, that capability is there and um, we'll have a sponsor, uh, we have a sponsor article on the knowledge base that'll get you there. You saw that the sponsors in the bottom left of auction cast, and to give you a visual, this is where you update those banners. Um, you can create your own banner. We provide you instructions on how to do that if you're unsure of how to connect that JPEG. And then all of those sponsors are clickable, um, giving you another way to help sponsor raise funds for your sale uh, or even for you know hosting the auction itself. Immediate buyer payments is an option. Um, as you saw uh, that you were, I was able to go in even on the back end as an administrator and see what the buyer was looking at. Um, in the case of, uh, let's see, just to give you the real life example that we were just playing with, um, we were on buyer totals and I think I was on, um, I was logged in as Triple R Ranch there. Uh, let me go to the main site and log in as Triple R Ranch, just so that you can see the buyers. Um, let me make sure, I think I know my number. Triple R Ranch. Signing in. Yes. So when I 
am logged in as the buyer, I can either click the checkout button here at the top or there's the cart at the top. Um, when I click checkout, it's going to show me exactly what I saw in the admin side. Um, I can pull it up. I can see I spent $200 on this uh, on this lot, it was adjusted by some fair adjustment fee. My total for my winning bids, you know, came out to two sixteen sixty seven. Um, I have some add-ons and some additional fees associated with that that the fair tagged on. You have the ability to add more fees if you want. Some people do, some people don't. Um, I'm okay with paying my online payment fee, and then I can check out with PayPal or pay with a credit card um, because this site is set up to pay through the payment gateway of PayPal. PayPal is my option. Um, Y'all are going to have additional options come July. So I look forward to implementing that with y'all uh, and seeing that work as well. Um, there are just a couple of uh, last wrap up items I wanted to mention. Um, when you are working through the immediate buyer payments, and I talked about this earlier, but I'm reiterating it uh, because it was important enough to get a slide in this webinar. Um, you have the option to allow the winners to receive a notification when they are marked as the buyer. Um, please note that if you have changes in buyers, um, and you're updating them that you might have someone get a notification and then if you needed to change it, then another notification is going to go out to that other person. However, if you are comfortable with how you're going to be updating, um, updating the winners in the system, then those winners can receive a notification and it's going to have the link for them to go directly in and pay if that's something you want. Um, Please make note that flooring is not calculated and displayed on immediate buyer payments on the auction site. Um, note that flat fee invoice adjustments can be placed on uh, an invoice in Showworks and then provisioned over to Showworks auction. We can show you more details about how that works in a knowledge-based article. I don't know, uh, Kylie, I might have the links for sponsors and adjustments um, ready for you to post, but I'm not sure if I do or not. Um, if not, we'll get them to you afterwards. And then uh, the immediate buyer payments, they don't include percentage adjustments, just so you know. Um, here's a tip I just wanna make sure comes across because there's a lot getting coordinated at the time that you're doing a live hybrid sale. Um, spent some time on the roles because the people who are helping you matter and what they're doing and how they're doing it really does matter. Um, for most of them, Showworks Auction is going to be a new system for them to learn or it's their first time learning a system and they might find it just really intuitive, but, um, you know, they, everyone's role is very specific and needs to be conducted in order for everything to work correctly with the data. Um, quite often, um, you're going to be moving really, really quickly through your sale and you're going to be utilizing that second or third administrator to update splits um, update those flooring designations and final destinations. And there may be times that you have an individual that is standing at the cashier ready to leave and you haven't finished your sale. There's still people, uh, lots that are getting updated. Um, you know that the destinations haven't gotten updated on everything. Um, it's possible to go ahead and clerk those winning bids over knowing that you might have some uh, that may need to be updated uh, and resend all of those winning bids over one big sweep again later after things have, have, um, have adjusted. Uh, that is one option if you had someone standing there and you needed to get 
Uh, maybe it was an animal that got floored and you need the ability to calculate that and show work. So you can push that data over, but know that there's still updates being made. And so ShowWorks is not your source of record at that point of, of all of that data because you're still making updates in the auction site and that data needs to come over. Um, another option, just so you know, and it's always an option, is if you pull up someone's bill or buyer payment activity or buyer activity and um, you need to you know that you need to put some things together to for the final bill, you can always accept their money on site and then go into that buyer and click on that payments tab and just record the payment. It's just going to give them a credit until you have applied the proper debits um, to zero out their bill. So there's ways to make it happen, um, especially in the moment. Um, in the case of clerking of the auction is being done in ShowWorks auction. You want to update all of this information in the auction site and let it flow over to ShowWorks 2020. Um, so many people are really comfortable in ShowWorks and that is why we're trying to tightly integrate so that you can go forth and use the powerhouse that ShowWorks is for billing and things like that. However, you want to make sure that the updates of those buyers, the updates of the splits, the updates of the flooring, the destinations, any destination notes gets done via the spotter tool and then clerk that over. Um, it's going to make things a lot simpler for you. Um, oh, and here's a screenshot. Clerk winning bids, this is what you're going to do to push that over, and I did show that a little bit earlier. Um, implementing ShowWorks auction, uh, this is, I think my, yep, it's my last slide. So this is just a timeline getting started. A lot of people wanna know, what should I be doing now? Um, the webinar that I did last week actually goes into the specific data elements that can be updated as soon as possible um, and during your show, after your show. There's really not much left to do by the time you get to setting your sale order uh, if you have already envisioned your online site. Uh, you can do so much setup ahead of time so that when it comes time to set your sale order, you can set your sale order, create your sale, and push it over to the auction site. Um, but this is just a little bit of a look. You can get started, request your online sessions. Um, if we're sending, if you receive an auction detail form from our auction team, fill it out. We're all, we're, we're not looking for, this is exactly what it is going to definitely be on the day of because things change, but it gives us a, a timeline of how to help and when to help, um, with different things. Um, auction monitor, our team wants to set up auction monitor with you whenever you're ready. Uh, you can run tests through it, we can set you up with a test environment so that you can see it work. Uh, we can get you set up with your payments uh, way ahead of time. That is always helpful, especially if you are using PayPal, um, communicating with them, letting them know your uh, dates. Uh, you can email showworks at paypal.com. Let them know when your peak time is so that they won't flag you as having fraudulent activity when you know you have 500,000 or a million dollars flow through um, overnight within a week. Uh, work on your registration, work on your images and videos, uh, prepare your data and auction uh, setup right here. And you know we can help work with you if you're trying to get some things set up ahead of time. We can open you up for buyer pre-registration today. Uh, we can get add-ons open for you today as soon as your entries close. Um, we can do any of that ahead of time, or you can wait and publish your sale at that time. But uh, let us know how we can help you. I appreciate those of you that were able to hang tight with me. We will get this recording out to everyone, um, and it's going to become part of our archive for training. So thank you so much. Um, I think that's all I have. So I definitely wanted to make sure I covered the critical live auction roles, 
uh, the key elements for successful imp implementation. And um, I think we've, we've covered that. So thank you all. And y'all have a wonderful day. God bless.